rededicate ourselves again. We need to rededicate ourselves. We need to take a step further. We need to rise up from our slumber. We need to rise up from the dust. We need to rise up and be able to move and march like gallant soldiers and be able to take the, the city and be able to take the promised land and be able to take all that the Lord has promised us. God is calling you. God wants to use you, but you are lukewarm. If you are lukewarm, it will, it's not, that call is not going to be effective. You have to stand. You have to stand up. You have to be on the hot side. You have to be on the positive side. You have to be on the side. God is calling you. Nobody is useless in the, in the kingdom of God. But if you keep yourself away, well, you've chosen that path. But you are useful. Every one of us is useful. There is something God wants to use you for. There is something God has committed into your hands that he wants to use you to achieve. Brethren, we have to pray and ask God to help us. Today, let's make a commitment. Today, let's make, let's consecrate ourselves again. Let's rededicate ourselves again for the Lord to use us. And as we do so, the Lord will use us mightily in Jesus' name. As we pray, let's commit the uh, servants of the Lord that the Lord had used unto us to bless us today. We pray, let's lift him up into the hands of God. Let's pray for more grace. Let's pray for more anointing. Let's pray that the Lord will continue to use him. So all the virtue that has gone out of him today, the Lord will refill him. The Lord will refill him, not only him, all the vessels, all the servants of the Lord that have been used today, from the time of study the scriptures, to the review, to moderation, that unto the, uh, the, the, the choristers, that the Lord will refill all of them, will bless them all, and that we, the listeners, we will not disappoint, that we will be ready and very uh, stand by to do what the Lord has committed into our hands and that none of us will be found wanting that the lord will help us and that our prayer will not stop here we need that fire in our prayer life that when we live here that prayer the prayer will continue reading of the bible will continue that we will not only listen to the word or read the bible when we come to the church it has to be an everyday thing every day we pray every day we read the bible so that we will be able to withstand the wiles and the caprices of the wicked one, and he will not be able to take us down. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you, O oh God, because of your word that you have spoken to us this day. Lord, we pray that all that we've heard today, that all the words that we've heard today, Father, you give us the grace to apply them in our li into our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that as we go, we are not leaving your presence, but we are leaving to our respective homes. We pray that your spirit will go with us. And Father, we pray that you will make us that fire, the fire brand you want us to be, that we will be on fire for Jesus. Our prayer life, oh God, any altar here that has been broken into pieces, Father, we pray that you fix them, you mend them, oh God, and let those altars be on fire again for you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray, oh God, for those who are still hurting between two opinions, neither here nor there, neither cold nor hot. Heavenly Father, we pray that today you give them a vision. Today, oh God, you open their eyes to discover your calling for their lives, to know what you want them to do, so that they will be useful in your kingdom the way they should in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray for our newcomers, Lord, who are watching us from afar, that those that have come and then they've gone, and those that are going to come tomorrow, that Lord, we pray that every one of them, Lord, will not be left behind in Jesus' name. And we pray for those, oh God, who are already discouraged, who are beaten down by the enemy, and they are thinking of throwing in the towel. Father, we pray that today you will revive and rekindle this ray of hope in them again in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray as we live here today, that throughout this week, your face, you will cause your face to shine upon us. Father, we pray for grace to be, to be able to operate and maintain this fire that we've gotten today throughout this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray that there will be no weak one among us. There will be no feeble one among us. Everybody here will be strong, that the enemy will not be able to take down anybody, any of us, in Jesus' name. We cover everybody here with the blood of Jesus. As we go today, Father, we pray that your spirit and your presence will remain with us. And the fire we've gotten today, nothing will be able to put it out. And the enemy will not be able to extinguish that fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shall
surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for coming to this service. We have come to the end of the service. But before we leave, we just want to remind us um, about our convention. We have two more Sundays to go. So the pastor wants us to be reminded about this convention that if you've not registered, please try and register because this will help the church to plan accordingly. If you're having a challenge, you can meet your zonal leader and then see how you can register. And those of us that have indicated um, the hotel, that you needed a hotel place, uh, we should try and make our payment. The pastor said that she let us know that by the 20th of this month, that's the cutoff. If we don't get your payment, then the room will be released back to the hotel. Praise the Lord. Then we have our flyers. Um, so the ushers will share it. We can start the publicity from today. So the ushers have it. We can give, uh, we can take four each. Uh, make sure you hand out the flyer to somebody and let them know that our convention is around the corner and that we will be expecting them um, to come on with us for the Lord will do great things in their lives. Um, regarding the, I think we we'll have those of us, okay, maybe that indicated we needed one thing or the other, like you discussed with uh, Bro Joshua last Sunday. Please, you want to see him before you go. Uh, regarding the transportation and the rooming, please, so that uh, he has some information for you. Make sure you see him before we leave. Um, I think that is all we have for now. Thank you very much. You all have a great week. And may the Lord continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up as you are lifting up your hand, online, over the radio, over the television, anywhere you are. You are willing to turn over your life completely without reservation unto the Lord. He wants to bring you that salvation now.
and he wants to turn your life and life around for the better and he wants to give you the grace and the strength to say come what may i follow the lord till the end of my life grace available love available strength available and the welcome of the lord available God bless you for standing and praying for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. And we bless your name because you are the God that cannot fail. You are the God that has called us. And as we respond and come, you are mighty to save. Save your people in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the bad habits of the past, all the evil things of the past, you break everything, cleanse everything, wash everything away, and make them as white as snow. I pray, Lord, the joy of salvation, the peace that comes with salvation, and the righteousness, the assurance that comes with salvation, grant unto everyone right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, there be the spirit of God witnessing in their hearts. They are saved. They are restored. They are now born again. They are children of God. Confirm it, Lord, in every heart there in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there, and they will give you the usual sleeves we we'll give to those who have just given their lives to the Lord so that as you feel that correctly, we may be able, we'll be able to keep on helping you. And then after this session, I'll come back to assure you and to minister to you of your healing that you must have today. Amen. We'll call on our moderating overseer to see us, uh, to help us in this session. Thank you and God bless you. Please keep standing. Our counselors, please go to them. And uh, wherever you are, please uh, be, collect a slip and a package from the counselors. If you are here at the Alpha location or in any of the centers that are connected as congregations, the counselors are coming to you there. Um, they will give you a slip. You will fill those slips with the information that is required your name, your address, your telephone number, all those things, supply them so that we'll be able to be of further assistance to you in your newfound faith. And for those who are uh, connected uh, through social media, uh, you have a, a link displayed on your screen uh, through which you can equally uh, supply the information that we use to uh, be of more assistance to you. Uh, this, uh, you can see a link there, gckhq.org slash connect. Uh, you can use that to, uh, to supply the information that is needed. Those on the radio and television, uh, there is a telephone number also that is displayed on the TV there on your screen. Plus 234 Nine one five four 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 nine two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Uh, with that, you'll be able to uh, supply information. Give us your tele uh, your telephone number, your name, your address. Uh, if you are writing on the uh, sleeps, please preferably you write in capital letters. If, you have, if they have not come to you, please indicate so that they'll be able to uh, reach you, give you the slip, so that you'll be able to supply this information. Write very clearly so that uh, we'll be able to uh, read the information that's on the, on the slip you are completing. Uh, please our, our counselors do that very quickly, and then once you are through, uh, our Father in the Lord, the convener of GCK, is still coming again to uh, reach out uh, to us with prayer for miracles. And I want to assure you that 
today being the last day, you will never go without your miracle. He has assured us, and I am telling you, you have a testimony. So uh, please, our counselors, do that very quickly. Let's be sure that you have um, col collected the names of uh, the people, that's the, uh, the slips that, they, that, that you have given to them. Please do that very quickly. Our Father and the Lord will be coming very shortly. And uh, you, uh, you, you, you'll be expecting that the, uh, the, the Lord will touch you in a special way. The miracles you need tonight will come your way in Jesus' name. Our counselors, I believe you have done that. I believe you have done that. If you have uh, finished with that, our Father in the Lord is coming now with the prayer for miracles. And I want you to believe God. You know, to, tonight being the last night, I can assure you, you will receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Our Father in the Lord is coming now, and you will receive your blessing. Praise the Lord. Your answer has come. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. He knows you there, he sees you there, and the answer now is on the way. And before the final amen, look at it, he has done it. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have any challenge, any problem, any, any, any problem, any challenge. And this is the day of demonstration and manifestation. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you and bless your name tonight for your goodness, for your power, and for your faithfulness. You cannot fail. You will not fail. I'm asking now, Lord, touch everyone in Jesus' name. Deliver, heal everyone in Jesus' name. Christ came for this purpose that he might destroy all the works of the devil. And I pray here to the right, to the left, to the center, to the front, everywhere, anywhere now, online, in the media, television, radio, anywhere, I pray the work of the devil will be destroyed in every life now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, deformity, you will correct. Infirmity, you will remove. Sickness, you will take away. And all the things that are working about in the body, I command them come out in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord, that your mighty power will move everywhere. You're not a partial God. You do for A, you do for B, you do for C, you do for everyone. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you manifest your healing power in everyone right now in Jesus' name. That insanity, that brain problem, that demonic problem, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for all those things walking about in the body, destroying their peace of mind, tearing them apart and torturing their lives. I command that evil power come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any kind of a heart problem or breathing problem and the palpitations there and the, the, the thing as if your heart will jump out, I command there will be peace in your system in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the anxiety and all the worry and all the fear, I see life is coming to an end. Lord, I pray, restore total health to everyone in Jesus' name. I'm asking, oh Lord, that the physical problem, tangible, that people feel, and the pain in their body, I pray, Lord, all the pains vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the hardness in that part of the body, in the tummy, on that right-hand side, I pray, Lord, you touch them right now and remove that hardness in that part of the body in Jesus' name. 
I pray that all the stiffness of the joints and all the pain of arthritis in their joints, in the elbows, in the shoulder, in the knee, even at the waist and at the ankle, Lord, I pray, lay your mighty hand on them and heal them perfectly. Make them whole in Jesus' name. Cancer, whatever stage of cancer that is, I pray that the mighty power of God will take that cancer away instantaneously in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. That I'm near, I pray the Lord will touch that I'm near and will remove that I'm near. You'll be free, totally free in Jesus' name the fibroid and any other swelling in the body, Lord, touch them by your mighty power, a definite miracle, fibroid, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, like the child I spoke about, that you created bone where there's no bone, now, any missing part of the body, whether in the bone, whether in the, it's in the stomach, whether it's kidney, or whatever it is, any missing part of the body, create that now and supply in everyone in Jesus name. Dumb person, speak out in Jesus name. Deaf person, hear in Jesus name. And the dim sight and the blindness, the cataract, the chroma, whatever it is, or it's in, at the back of the, the retina, I'm asking Lord, you know where the problems are, touch them, transform them, heal them in Jesus name. I pray now for everyone, everyone from the top of there to the tip of the toe. I pray that the virtue of healing will pass through everybody right now. Everywhere here, everywhere online, everywhere in the congregation that are congregated, listening together, miracle everywhere now in Jesus' name. Power manifestation everywhere now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray nobody will go without their healing, without their deliverance, and without the manifesting of the power of God in their lives. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, set them free. Confirm the miracle in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is done. I said it is done. You see the healing there. And as you see the healing, you come out so we can have a glorious time of testimony sharing tonight. The moderating overseer, please. The, the Lord has done it. Here with your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, everything you desire, the Lord is pouring the blessing of God upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Supernatural freedom through Christ. Live from Charles de Gaulle Stadium, the Republic of Benin. A French-speaking West African country with its capital in Porto Novo. 22nd to 27th June, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily. Sunday service at 0700 hours GMT. And that's not all. There will be ministers, church workers, and professionals conference with a theme. Fulfilling the ministry with heaven in view. Teenagers, campus students, and young adults will be inspired to arrive and shine as Impact Academy. Ministry is God's servant. The convener of GCK. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi. With global choir ministering from across the world and special guest music ministration by Dan Lutet. Broadcast to the world live via satellite, radio and television, and all our social media platforms. GCK Season 3. Your time has come. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And Lord, I pray tonight, you open our eyes. Make us to see. Make us to understand. And Lord, we pray that today, you will help us to know what's in your heart. You are passing on to us in Jesus' name. Strengthen your people tonight. Enlighten your people tonight. Protect your people tonight. 
I will pray that all danger will be taken out of our way and will remain safe and secure until we reach Beulah land, the land of promise, the land of Canaan. Hold the hand of every brother and every sister, every child and every youth so that, Lord, you'll take us to that glorious place. In Jesus' name we pray. You can see now, God bless you. We come to our Bible study. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 15. By the way, for those who have not been following us uh, systematically, we've been studying from Matthew chapter 5. We've gone through chapter 5, chapter 6. And now we're almost concluding chapter 7. We're now in verse 15. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Anytime you see that word, beware. It's a word of warning. It means there is danger ahead. Beware. We can say be aware and know that every road does not lead to heaven be aware there are deceivers that will point to the wrong way beware be aware let's look at second kings chapter 6 second kings chapter 6 and look at the use of this word beware Second Kings chapter 6, verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. It was a matter of life and death. And the prophet, the man of God, the faithful true prophet, he sent to the king, and he said, be aware, be watchful. Beware that you do not pass this particular place because the enemy is staying there waiting for you. Verse 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of. Beware is a watch of warning. And want him of, and saved himself there, not once, not twice. You see, when you take note and you take heed, and then you follow the word of the Lord, beware. Then you preserve your salvation. You preserve your soul. You preserve your inheritance. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 2, beware of dogs, beware of evil walkers, beware of the concession. I'm sure you've seen those signs before on some gates. Beware of dogs. Don't just rush in until the owner over there, the landlord comes to bring you in. Beware of dogs. Otherwise, you could be beaten. Otherwise, you could be poisoned. Otherwise, you could have a deadly disease. Beware. And then it says, beware of evil workers. That means it's not everybody you meet on the street that wants to pass on a good thing unto you. There are destructive people, and it says, be aware, be watchful, take heed, beware. Chroni Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Anytime there is danger, we are warned, and then we are told to beware. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you, destroy you through philosophy and vain deceit 
after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. It says, beware. Lest anybody will turn your mind, your heart, your focus, your faith away from Christ and turn you to another way. Beware. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, that's the word again. You know that the deceivers will come. The scoffers will come in the last days, asking, where is the sign of his coming? Because of that it says, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Now, that word, beware, sometimes when you read the Bible, there are two other words that are used, having the same meaning. The words, take heed, take heed, Matthew chapter 16. So it's either, it says, take heed, or it says, beware. We're looking at Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. Matthew 16, verse 6. Je then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware. Those two things now combined together. Be very watchful. Look at the path you are taking. Open your eyes and see. And then think through what you hear. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not to be, not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now what happens? Suppose somebody does not take heed. Suppose somebody just lives his life. Suppose somebody says, I don't believe in that kind of negative utterance. All I know is that I'm sincere. And I want to give the benefit of the doubt to everybody on earth that they too that they are sincere. I don't want all this kind of suspicion that you have to watch, you have to beware, and you have to be aware that they receive. I don't want all that. All I want is positive talk. I don't want any warning. Let's see, if we, let's see if we don't take care. We don't take heed. Second Samuel chapter 20. In Second Samuel chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 9. Second Samuel chapter 20, verse 9. And Joab said unto Amasa, Art thou in hell, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel safe and secured with a man like this? He met him and he called him my brother. And he asked for his welfare. But remember those words beware. Take heed. Verse 10. But Amisa took no heed. Amisa took no heed. You know, to just count everybody as a friend. Everyone that wants to kiss you. Anyone that wants to befriend you. Anyone that wants to have fellowship with you. And then you throw away the words of Jesus. Beware. Take heed. Verse 10. But Amisa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again. And he died. That's the 
result of not taking heed, the result of not being aware that there's, a, there's danger out there. The Lord is talking about the spiritual danger, the eternal danger, the irreversible danger that can come upon a soul, upon the citizen of the kingdom, upon a follower of Christ, upon a disciple of the Lord, the danger that can come if that disciple will not take heed. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 7. Reading there in verse 15, now you understand, this is warning. And this warning is telling us that to protect our salvation, to protect our lives, and to protect our destiny that we need to be aware is not everybody that says they know the way of the Lord that actually knows the way of the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing and but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, gave this warning out of love. As a shepherd, he does not want us to be destroyed. And yet he knows there are ravening, destructive wolves. Therefore he said, beware, be watchful, be on your guard. Take warning. Christ is sounding this alarm. And giving this warning was motivated by perfect love on the basis of is perfect knowledge. Notice that. Perfect love based on perfect knowledge. He knew the danger ahead. And it will be no, uh, there will be no warning if there were no danger. Knowing the presence of false prophets, even in his own time, and foreseeing the rise of teachers and preachers of damnable heresy in our time. He gave the warning over and over. Not only himself, you find the warnings all through the scriptures. Beware then. If it was necessary to warn the people at the time of Christ, it is much more necessary today. Satan, the world, the flesh, and not the only dangers in the way of the believer. There is another great danger, the danger of being deceived by false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing. Therefore, it says, beware. Watch, be on your guard. We're dividing the study tonight to three parts. Number one, Christ's warning concerning false prophets. Number two, crafty wolves closed as faithful prophets. Crafty, deceptive wolves closed as if they were faithful prophets. Number three, the concealed wickedness of false prophets. Let's come to number one, Christ's warning concerning false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets. This one is not a suggestion, an imperative, a command. And if you have confidence in Christ, you have to take his word at face value. If you know that Christ knows the danger ahead, more than you know, you have to take Christ's word seriously. If you know that Christ has given you this so that he can protect your life, you have to take heed to what the Lord is saying. Beware of false prophets. And then it says, they come to you in sheep's clothing. And that is just to present a nice uh, surface, a nice appearance. But then it tells us in what lid they are, ravening wolves. Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, it tells us that near the time of his coming, the false prophets will multiply. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4, 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't trust in, you know, all these, anyone, so much that you push your Bible aside and just say, they have the truth. They know the truth. And that's the danger, and that's the mistake that the church made in what is called the dark ages. They didn't treat the Bible for themselves. They didn't check up whether this is was so or not. A priest came, a preacher came. And he told them, this is the word of the Lord, and this is the way to heaven. And they just took it. And they didn't know that it is not everybody that declares the way to heaven that knows the way to heaven. And yet Jesus said, so we don't come to another dark age, another period of spiritual darkness. He says, take heed that no man deceive you, verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. That's why the Lord is warning us, and he says, beware of false prophets. There will be many that will come, and they will come at every turn of the road. And they will deceive many. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. If you are looking for evidence, they will try to show some evidence. And even Jesus Christ calls the evidence they will show, he calls them great wonders. And he called those things great signs. Well then, the Lord is telling us, it's not everybody that is uh, producing some sign, producing some wonders that's actually standing for him. He says, the mark of the true prophet is that he'll show you the narrow way that leads to life. The mark of the false prophet, it will show you the broad way and it will tell you, go ahead and enjoy yourself. That will take you to heaven. But the Lord says, even if those prophets come and then they show you the broad way and then they're able to affirm what they say with great wonders and great signs, don't be carried away by the signs and the wonders. The signs and the wonders are good if we have the narrow way that leads to heaven. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I pray they will not deceive you. Behold, I have told you before. It tells us in second. Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'm looking at verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. That's always in the heart of the husband to the wife. Jealous over you with godly jealousy. That's always in the heart of a mother towards her daughters. And the mother is always saying, my girl, come here. You're going to school. Beware. That's how the father is jealous over his sons, of course, and his daughters too. My son, come here. Universities nowadays are filled with young people looking for extra power. And they get into the occult. I'm, I'm sending you out to go and learn. To go and learn the sciences or the arts. When you get there, beware of those societies. You see, every parent will want the children. And every pastor, every shepherd, with the heart of love, will have this jealous care over the members. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to, an, to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, 
as a serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That was a concern in the heart of the apostle, and that is a concern in the heart of every Christian minister, every Christian leader. In verse 4, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, that's a concern. Another person coming, a false prophet coming, preaching another Jesus, whom ye have not, whom we have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit, that's a concern. That instead of having only the Holy Spirit, there is another kind of spurious experience of the Spirit. If ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, a perverted gospel, a corrupted gospel, a damning gospel. If ye receive another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And then in verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That is, they will talk, they will act, they will dress, they will behave, they have the mannerisms of the true prophets of God and the true apostles. But it says they are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their words. I pray we will not fall into their hands. If we're not going to fall into their hands, we must beware. In the early church, they followed the trail of the true preachers. They followed the steps of the faithful prophets of God. The apostle Paul will get somewhere. He'll preach the gospel. Many people will come to the, know the Lord. Immediately, the false preachers will come in. And then they'll begin to contradict what the apostle had laid down. Even in the time of Jesus Christ, the Pharisees were always, always in every meeting. And they were not there to sink in, to soak in, to accept what Jesus was saying. It was to preach their own error after Jesus Christ would have laid the foundation. That's why Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Galatians chapter 1. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Paul the Apostle with his team had gone to the province of Galatia and had declared the true gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of peace, the gospel of life, life eternal. And then after he finished there, and many people had come to know the Lord, and they gave their heart unto the Lord wanting to follow the Lord till the end of their lives. Then the false prophets moved in. And they were able to convince those Galatians. And Paul the Apostle heard about it. And Paul the Apostle said, I marvel, I'm surprised that she has so soon removed. Here we are at the retreat. The Lord has blessed us. Am I right? The Lord has opened our eyes. We, we have gone almost from the beginning of the Bible to the end. Our preachers, they have, uh, they have made the word of God plain almost in every subject. And then we have shared time together of going into the word of God. And then soon after, for any of us to give our attention, our ear to the false prophet to damage us, to destroy us or to make us go astray in the wrong path. That would be a tragedy. The victory we have 
nobody will take it away from us. And the triumph that we have in Christ already, nobody will take it away from us in Jesus' name. But for these Galatians, Paul the Apostle said, I marvel, I'm so surprised that she has so soon removed from him. He wasn't concerned about just following Paul. He was concerned they were not following Christ again. They were removed from Christ who had saved them, who called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, the seven, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. They'll bombard you with advertisement. They'll bombard you with invitation cards. They'll bombard you with free literature. They'll bombard you with free recorded messages. They'll bombard you with internal internet messages. And all they want to do is to make sure that you go away from the narrow path that leads to heaven. And it says, which is not another, but there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now in verse 8, look at how serious the matter is. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I again, so say I now again, if any man, no matter his qualification, you see, Paul was very sure of the gospel he had preached. Paul was very sure of the purity, the solidity, the entirety of the gospel he had preached. And therefore he said, though we or an angel from heaven come to preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached already, whoever that may be, let him be accursed. And then he wanted to repeat himself in verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And it wasn't Paul the apostle alone that warned the believers of the danger of these false prophets. Let's look at Second Peter chapter 2. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people there were in the Old Testament, even as there shall be, now New Testament, false teachers among you. There shall be. This is definite. This is sure. And they will try to spread their poison, their erroneous doctrine. And now they even have a lot of opportunities. They don't have to come to you physically now. They can come through the radio, through the television. They can come through the papers. And they can come through the internet. And they can come through all these audio messages that they put on the internet. And the Lord is saying, beware. There were false prophets among the people in those days. And there shall be false teachers among you who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies. It is not everything you hear uh, that is supportive of the truth. It's not everything you hear that will nourish your soul. It's not everything you hear that will develop your spiritual life. It says that damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. You think if somebody is teaching error, nobody will follow them. If anybody is teaching false doctrine, nobody will, nobody will accept. Their churches will not grow. They will not have any success. The Bible says no. In fact, the false prophets draw more crowds. It says in verse 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness 
shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. The point is, there will be false prophets. There are false prophets, but the Lord will protect us. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. This is John, the apostle of love. You know, if you have love, you're going to warn people of danger. Warn people of danger. I, I, I know about uh, different people. I know somebody that saw a bottle of kerosene. Then there's a bottle of water. But because there is no label and they look alike, this individual took the bottle of kerosene and drank. And before he knew what, a lot was in the stomach. He created great problem. You know, if you have a bottle of water, the water of life, and then you have a bottle of false doctrine, poisonous doctrine, but you don't know because there's no label. And then you just take the bottle of false doctrine and then you put it inside your spiritual belly. You can die. That's why the warning is there. Look at the label. If there's no label there, stop. Find out what's inside this bottle before you take it. And the apostle of love will warn you. And this is what John is doing. And he's saying, beloved, believe not every spirit. You know, if you come over here, we've attended retreat, we've studied enough, you've taken a lot of notes. And I'm sure that a lot of us are also buying the recorded messages. There's a lot you can listen to after the retreat. But then to live here and go to another place that will reverse everything you have heard, that will erase everything you have heard, that will contaminate everything you have heard. How wise will you be? Believe not every spirit, but try, test, examine, investigate the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the apostle of love and telling us, telling us many false prophets have gone into the world. And the Lord is warning us so that we will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. I said you will not be deceived. Who are the people that ought to take warning? The warning is necessary for sinners who is already who is who are already accustomed to the broad way. They're already accustomed to the broad way. They're used to the broad way. They find the broad way convenient. And those uh, people must be aware that that broad way will lead them to eternal ruin, eternal destruction. Not only that, sinners who oh, are thoughtless about spiritual matters. The people just, they live a carefree life. I don't care. Anyone that comes and listens to them, those who are thoughtless about their spiritual destiny, those are the people. And if you are there, you're, you're a simple brother, a simple sister, a simple-hearted man, a simple-hearted woman. And anybody who comes to just open the door, the Lord is telling you tonight, that attitude must change. Don't be thoughtless about spiritual matters. Number three, sinners who took religious deceivers as their final authority. You know, some of us, we're too lazy to read the Bibles ourselves. We're too lazy to buy the books that are available and to reach them. We're too lazy to listen to the message directly ourselves at a spare moment. And we, we commit the destiny of our souls and into the hands of deceivers and we make them the final authority. Those are the people that ought to be aware. Not only that, people who entrust their eternal destiny into the hands of ignorant leaders of religion. Ignorant leaders of religion, you entrust your soul to them. The Lord is saying, your soul is your soul. 
And if you perish, you are the one that will suffer for eternity. Don't entrust your soul to the leaders and to the preachers and the land who are ignorant of the fullness and the demand of the gospel. Be careful, be watchful, beware. And then there are people, there are sinners who have been awakened. They are on the verge of decision. They're saying, I must do something about my soul. I must do something about my salvation. I must do something about my destiny. At such a time, you are at the crossroad. Should you go to the right? Should you go to the left? You need this warning. Beware of false prophets. And then there are those who are concerned about their spiritual welfare. And you are concerned about the spiritual welfare of other people. Beware, be careful of the books you recommend, of the religious materials you distribute. Beware of false prophets, lest you think you are helping somebody on his way to heaven, and you are actually derailing them, deceiving them, destroying them. And then this warning is needed by new converts. They have just come to know the Lord. They're very thirsty. They want to hear anything anybody wants to say. Those new converts must beware of false prophets. There are believers suffering persecution. You know, when we're suffering persecution, your heart is very soft. Sorrow softens us. Suffering softens us. And we're looking for comfort from any direction. Anyone that will offer comfort, soothing words at such a time when there's persecution and pressure, and when you're vulnerable, and when you're open to any comforter, that is the time to remember. It's not everybody that comes pro uh, providing solution to the problem at the time of sickness. This is your sickness. What have you done? What has your church done? What have your brothers and sisters done? What have they done in the house fellowship at such a time when you are under serious stress because of the suffering of the sickness? That's the time you ought to beware. Beware of false prophets. They'll come with solution. And then disciples of the Lord who are feeling the weight of the cross. You're carrying the cross and it's heavy. And then questions are rising up, arising in your mind. Should I go through all this? Is it actually necessary? This self-denial, this cross-bearing, it at such a time, you must remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beware of false prophets, because they'll come to you. And they'll say, how are you? Isn't this cross heavy? This self-denial, is this not too much? And this demand on your life, do you have to go through all this? And it's such a time when those sympathizers come. Yes, they will sympathize. Remember, the false prophets, they have sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are very dangerous, destructive, and deadly. And then the ministers, the preachers of the gospel, the preachers of the gospel, how we need to beware of false prophets because the danger is very much if the preacher, if the pastor, if the leader is contaminated, he will not be the only one that will be deceived. His congregation will be deceived. Deceive a minister. Deceive a a, a preacher deceive a person that is uh, sharing the word of life with thousands of people and all those thousands of people are in danger that's why preachers will beware of the books they read the messages they listen to and they will not be looking for easy cheap way to gather crowd so that you can steal the truth beware of false prophets for the sake of your own soul, for the sake of the souls of many people around, take it, beware. Point number two, crafty wolves closed as faithful prophets. 
We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. They come in sheep's clothing. They're deceptive. They're crafty. They are closed as if they were faithful prophets. Matthew, sorry, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Here is Paul the Apostle. I was actually rounding up now with these people. He administered to them and he called them together. And he reminded them the fullness of the gospel he had declared unto them. And then he said in his mind, in his conscience, his conscience was free. No condemnation because he had faithfully declared the word of God and fulfilled his duty. Look at verse 26 and verse 27. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, there's no doctrine I've not taught you from A to Z, from the beginning to the end. From the rudiments and the foundation up to the things that are meant for mature people. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. After that, now he said, Take it. Beware, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Jesus called the false prophets Romani wolves. And Paul, the apostle, by the Spirit of God, called these same false prophets, he called them grievous wolves. They'll enter in. They will not even want you. They will not wait for you to come to them. They enter in. They want to enter into the house. Or maybe they want to enter into the church. But we will not allow them. But start and of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. There will be some of these people, they knew the way of truth. And they had been among the people of God. All of a sudden, they will rise up. They want to develop another ministry, another fellowship. They want to build another church. And then within, they begin to talk to individuals. All these things you are hearing, do you agree? All these things that we are learning, do you think they have told us the whole thing? They want to draw away disciples after themselves. That's the time you want to be on your guard. Beware. And it says in verse 31, Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. I say. Chapter 44, verse 20. I say chapter 44, Verse 20, you see these the false prophets, you see what he do? In verse 20, he feedeth on ashes. He doesn't have real spiritual diet to take in. He himself, that false prophet, he has been feeding on ashes spiritually. A deceived heart has turned him aside. And he cannot deliver his soul. Nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? 
That's why the Lord is saying we must be careful, beware. Second, Thessalonians. You see those uh, false prophets, something has happened to them. What happened to them? Their hearts are now adjusted to the false doctrine. And they're going to be declaring the false doctrine confidently. As if that were the truth. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love for the truth. That's their problem. That's a major challenge. They do not receive. They have not received the love for the truth. They don't like some doctrine. They don't like the word of God. They don't accept the way of the cross that leads home. And because of that, they cannot be saved. In verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now they're deluded. They actually now believe a lie. Really, seriously, with all their heart, they embrace, they hold on to that lie. And now they believe, really, that the broad way will still get them to heaven. They say, grace plus any kind of lie, broad way or no broad way, once there is grace, you'll get there. That's the problem. And they believe that to the core. And they will try to convince you. But Jesus said, it's only the narrow way that leads unto life eternal. And don't let anybody who has deceived himself, who has a hardened conscience, who has a, a seared conscience, who now believes a lie. Don't allow that person to come to you and say it will be all right at the end of the day. No, it will not be all right. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. All who do not believe the truth will be damned. No matter, no matter who they are. If we're going to be saved, we must accept the truth. Believe the truth and live by the truth that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Have you noticed that although many people are religious today, and many people, they'll claim to be born again. With all their claim, ungodliness is increasing in every country in our continent. And even beyond this continent. Why? Because of the deception of the false prophets and the way of righteousness is confused with the way of liberty. And it says they will increase unto more ungodliness. These are the people, they have charisma, they don't have character. They seem to have some gifts, but no grace. They appear to have what you call love, but no light. If a person has love, but there's no light, the light of the gospel, the light of the truth, they'll destroy us. They have some tenderness. You know, the way uh, they, they have the milk of human nature, the milk of human tenderness. And they're caring and loving and hospitable. Tenderness without truth. And you know, people are sucked in. Because, you know, in our human nature, we need care, we need tenderness, we need love. And once some people can touch us with a tender hand, and then they can speak to us some tender words, we forget. 
that it is not the tenderness that should be number one. It is the truth. In fact, uh, you know, uh, the way human beings feel, if somebody has truth without tenderness, another person has tenderness without truth, you're likely to follow the one that is having tenderness without truth because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel secure. It makes you feel uh, you are catered for. But tenderness without truth will damn the soul. These people, they have hospitality without holiness. They can take care of people. They can be very much hospitable. And that's the deception. But the holiness is not there. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They are the people that have eloquence without enlightenment. Eloquence. They can sway the crowd. It's not only preachers that sway the crowd. Politicians too can sway the crowd. What we're looking for is not the eloquence. We're looking for enlightenment. It's a spirit enlightened by the word of truth. That's what we're looking for. Other people have worship without the word. Worship without the word. You know, you get into some places and uh, the worship will take you to the skies. You feel high. You say, this is wonderful. The way they worship. But then when it comes to the word, there is no word. Is it just the worship? Is that, that just ministering to a feeling? And then you see, everything becomes sentimental. All that will not take us to heaven is by the word. That we're going to get to heaven. You don't want to have fellowship without food. The food for the soul. And that's the reason we need to beware. And notice, when you get into a church, when you get into an assembly, when you get to a fellowship, what do you see there? Is the food for the soul, the bread of life? Is it there? Otherwise, you might just see that you are deceived. Prosperity without purity. Or the great danger. Success without salvation. Revelation without righteousness. All these things can be very deceptive in religion. Beware of those traveling wolves in sheep's clothing. Destructive adversaries. Closed as if they had dazzling affection. Dangerous foes. Fiends. Closed as delightful friends. Poisonous serpents. In the appearance of peaceful saints, cruel tormentors, closed as compassionate teachers, wicked murderers, closed as winsome ministers, messengers, determined destroyers, closed as devoted defenders. That's why the Lord is saying, beware, beware of wolves. Their wounds inwardly, whatever their outward pretense may be, they might look polished on the outside. Even when they pretend and pose as shepherds, they're looking for sheep to devour, not to defend, not to protect, and not to feed. And Jesus said, Beware, you'll beware. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 7, point number 3. The concealed wickedness of false prophets. You see there's wickedness at heart and that is concealed. The concealed wickedness of false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Be aware. Be watchful. Take heed. Keep yourself. Be on your guard. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. And who can see the heart but God himself? Many times, we don't see beyond the smile on their faces. Many times, we don't see beyond the keys of Joab. We don't see the sword that is hidden. Many times, we don't see the keys. We don't see beyond the keys of, um, of this uh, man, Judas Iscariot. Many times, we don't see beyond the superficial humility of Absalom. That's the reason we should beware. 
because inwardly they are ravening wolves. We're looking at Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. Matthew 23, reading from verse 13. But warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Did you ever think about that? That these religious teachers, very zealous, very devoted, very much dedicated, and they pray every time at the corner of the street and in the synagogue, and they visit the widows so as to, they say they're caring for their spiritual lives. Did anybody ever suspect that these people were shutting up, closing the kingdom of heaven against the people? And as you see many of the preachers today, many of the prophets today, nice outwardly, do you know the intention in the heart? And then it says, ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. They will not go into the experience of genuine salvation. Neither will they allow the people that want to enter into that genuine experience of salvation to enter in. They will not enter in, into the experience of holiness and sanctification. Neither will they allow other people that want to believe it to enter in. Beware of those false prophets. In verse 14, want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for ye pretense make long prayers. Have you seen how people publicize their prayers? advertise their prayers and then they will have all those uh, whether pictures or sketches and testimonies they suppose that everywhere have you found the uh, testimonies of the people who are sinners but now they are saved testimonies of the people that are divorced their wives now they have got their wives back have you got the testimonies of those who are criminals and now their lives are turned around have you found the testimonies of those people that robbed and then did not make restitution? Have you had the testimonies of the people that wanted to break the house of the home and the family of another person, but now God has delivered them? They are not into prostitution anymore. Only the miracle of uh, healing and, you know, God touched my kidney and God removed HIV AIDS and God did, and did this and God did that. That's all we had, all they advertise. But the Lord is telling us all that those things are good if they're real. But the real sin that takes us to heaven is this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Give us testimony concerning change of life, change of character, change of personality, change of attitude. But you see all these people, they went about making long prayers for a pretense. And the Lord is saying, don't let them catch you. Don't let them suck you in. Don't allow them to deceive you. No, make the first things first. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And after that, all these things shall be added unto you. Look at verse 14 again. Want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for ye pretends make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one disciple, one follower, one devotee. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. Verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? That's the danger. We will escape in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 10, Psalm 10, reading from verse age. And you know, sometimes uh, you have to really have the spirit of God. A false prophet, you say, is this one the one they call false prophet? Is so gentle, is so humble. 
and, and you know the man did not know me and I look at the man everybody respects him and he's saying yes sir yes sir to me this man is humble can this be a false prophet I don't know you must listen to what he has to say you must listen to his message and you must look at what is coming out of the heart because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks don't be deceived by the smooth polished exterior that's superficial look at what's in the heart Psalm 10 verse 8 is seated in the locking places of the villages in the secret places does he murder the innocent his eyes are privileged search against the poor he lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den, he lies in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor when he draws him into his net. How does he draw him into the net? He couches, he humbles himself. You see that? He couches, he bends low, he appears humble. And he greets you with that kind of humility. It's the humility of Absalom. It's deadly, it's dangerous, it's deceptive. He couches, he humbleth himself, so that the poor may fall by his strong ones. That's why you want to take heed. That's why you want to beware, so that you will not be deceived. I pray they will not catch you in Jesus' name. The intention is to kind of uh, make us turn away from the truth. The intention is to add us to their number so that as they have deceived their own devotees, their followers, so that they can deceive us as well. They want to add us to their register. They want to count us as part of them. You are not part of them. I said you will not be part of them. You will stand for the truth for the rest of your life. Not only to stand for the truth, you will preach this truth yourself. Because I'm believing that God is raising all preachers and prophets and evangelists. Even in this retreat, the power of God will be upon your life. You have got the truth. And the fire of God is burning in your soul. And you will arise and then... You are going to even snatch the captives of those false prophets away from their captivity. And you'll bring them to the truth in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. This is why it's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. You have the truth of the Spirit. You have the Spirit of truth as well. So that when you declare the truth, and then one of these uh, false prophets want to contradict you, you'll be able to manifest the power of the Holy Ghost and arrest the situation. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 6. Acts 13 verse 6. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Look at that. Look at the name. Bar-Jesus. That's the son of Jesus. Look at the name. Don't allow the name to fool you. Don't allow the title to deceive you. Don't allow the position to deceive you. 